Hello, True Crime family. This is Arctic Fox True Crime. Today, we're going to be covering the case of Daniel Robinson. Uh, usually, I cover missing children. However, this is a case that really hasn't gotten the attention that it deserves, and I wanted to go ahead and quickly cover it for y'all. Now, Daniel went missing about eight months ago, and he was last seen near Buckeye, Arizona, about 50 miles southwest of Phoenix. Now, since then, his father has been working tirelessly to search for his son. Um, you know, it's it's been eight months since uh, Daniel was last seen. Um, he had been seen last leaving his job site in Buckeye, and then almost, a, yeah, about a month later, Daniel's jeep, was found in a ravine about four miles from where he was last seen. Now, the cops say that it appears that the vehicle rolled over, and Daniel's clothes, cell phone, wallet, keys, they were all found at the scene. And I can't imagine that anyone would just voluntarily leave their their cell phone, of all things, or their wallet at, at the scene. That, to me indicates foul play, or that he had some type of head injury, you know, kind of like the, the whole Mara Murray thing. He, she could have had a head injury, went out into the, the forest, and froze to death out there, and what they're thinking is that, in Daniel's case, he could have wandered off into the desert and fell down a mine shaft or a well, and met his demise possibly but you know his dad his dad's not giving up hope his dad thinks that it's possible that he found help but had some type of amnesia and he could even be living in a in a homeless community but it's a roller coaster to think about trying to get answers or you think you're getting closer to some and then the next thing you know you're starting over from step one because it you know, you feel like you're not really getting the help that you want. And <clears throat> David, he actually left his home in South Carolina and moved to Phoenix. He hired a private investigator. He assembled a search crew. And they've conducted over 20 searches looking for da for, for Daniel. Uh, now David's wanting to expand his efforts into the Valley Cities because, like I said, he thinks his son could have a head injury and could be part of a homeless population. Now, the Buckeye police, they say it's an open and active investigation and that they're following up on all the tips, but, you know, they haven't even provided any helicopters to try to search the desert or anything like that, you know, and the sad thing about this case is that, you know, when Daniel went missing, it was about the same time as Gabby Petito's case, <coughs> which got all of the national attention, so... Daniel's story didn't really get any attention nationally, and it didn't even make the local news until the 9th of July, which was two weeks after he disappeared. You know, it, it's unfortunate, to say the very least. You know, it, you know, it, he just didn't get the attention that, that he needed. You know, and, you know, I'm not trying to take anything away from Gabby Petito, because that was a dire situation where... Her family was absolutely devastated and grieving and everything. I just think that all cases should get as much attention as Gabby's case did. There's no reason why one person's case, because she happened to have been a YouTuber, should get <clears throat> so much more attention than the next person's case who wasn't a YouTuber, wasn't a social media influencer. You know what I'm saying? You know... I mean, yes, they were grieving just like David was grieving, uh, looking for their young daughter, and it's not their fault, it's just the way the system is set up. And unfortunately, <coughs> people of color, they often don't get hardly any attention on their cases, and it's sad. Um, you know, like David Robinson, he said it's hurtful to see that Gabby's case got way more urgency than what his son's case did. He says you have to literally beg and plead and almost work and do all kinds of twists and turns just to get some type of attention for your kid, just to be heard and get some kind of attention so that they can get movement on the ground. 
get some pressure on the police department. You know, and here's the thing. Cases of missing white women are given more focus and urgency. People of color are disappearing at far higher rates, it seems like. And according to a 2020 FBI data, black people make up 35% of missing persons reports, but only 13% of the U.S. population. White people, meanwhile, make up 54% of missing reports, but they're 76% of the U.S. population. <clears throat> Everybody's case should be treated exactly the same way. There shouldn't be one treated greater than the other or more spotlight on one than another, especially the urgency that the first 24 to 48 hours is the most crucial in finding someone. As time goes by, you know, David says the odds of finding Daniel grow smaller, but he's committed to finding his son no matter how long that takes. Now, he says he's been to the desert, he's been there in the desert heat, of Arizona, I mean, those temperatures get 118, 120 degrees, and now he says it's changed from being a rescue mission to more of a recovery mission, and you know, as a father, that's got to be a very hard thing to swallow, but <clears throat> he says he's there for his son, and he's not giving up, and he'll keep fighting, which, you know, any parent that's worth any anything at all would feel the same way. You know, <clears throat> he says, if nobody cares, he does, and he's going to do everything he can to find him. And, you know, it's just a really sad case <clears throat> all the way around. And I, I'm i hoping that it's a possibility that he did have amnesia, and he did end up in a homeless community, and he's still out there just unable to communicate who he is and who his family is and things like that. Um, you know, unfortunately, I mean, it, like the stories that I read on this, this is like the second or third that I've read today, and it doesn't even have the the contact information for the Buckeye Police Department for, say, if you've seen Daniel. You know, I'm, I hate that. You know, I'm sure if I were to um, go to <coughs> Google, I could find the flyer and it would have the information. But that's that's sad that you've got to actually look for a missing person's flyer. That information should be in every one of these news articles at the end of it, saying if you've seen Daniel Robinson, please contact the Buckeye Police Department, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if we can pull his missing person's flyer up and see if we can get the information that way. All right, here we go. The lever pull up. Just bear with me here. All right, here's his missing flyer. Daniel Robinson, last seen on the 23rd of June, driving a blue June 2021, driving a blue Jeep Renegade away from his job site near Parkway, Valley Parkway in Buckeye, Arizona, heading west. Now, his cell phone pinged, but no location data was available due to the phone being off or out of range. Um, area searches have been conducted, but, uh, okay, well, this is an old information then, because his Jeep was found his cell phone was found, and some clothing was found. Um, but if you have any information as to his whereabouts, you can call 623-349-6400. Again, that's 623-349-6400. Again, I want to thank you for, for watching the content. If you've seen Daniel, please make that phone call, or even if you have any tips 
as to where he may be located, make that call to the 623-349-6400. Let's try to bring him home. Um, go ahead and give the video a like. Share the video, most importantly, so that we can get Daniel's story out there. While you're here, click that red subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notifications as to every time I upload new content. As always, I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.